Good afternoon, Madam Hi, CJ. Uh, on behalf of the Duke Law Press Office, we'd like to thank you for the opportunity thank for you. this, uh, for your time to answer questions. Anyway, I'd like to go back to the pork barrel issue. Okay. <laughs> uh, just, uh, if, we, if we can't discuss uh, your, your opinions on the issue on the congressional pork, maybe okay. we can tackle some about the uh, judicial funds. Okay. So, you know, you, I'm sure you're aware of this controversy sounding the Congressional Pork Barrel Funds. Uh, is there a mechanism in the judiciary that, that, that prevents, that shields the judiciary's funds from similar uh, like misuse and anomalies, anomalies? Now, with respect to the ongoing uh, budget allocation process, I had been informed that cases are going to be filed. So prudence dictates I cannot respond. Dictates I cannot respond to your question. Is the judiciary shielded from accountability? No. Every single centavo of the judiciary is fully audited. Even the 20% uh, JDF is fully audited. And we show everyone. You can see how we spent the 20% of the JDF. So he, he, we cannot escape. COA accounting. And uh, okay, thank you. Okay, for the period of August 2012 to July 2013, uh, for the ch total JDF collection, it reached 1 billion. 870 million of this, or 80%, was distributed to all the employees across the country uh, on any uniform rate, more or less, and v variable but little differences. Uh, and they were promptly released. So this is already out of our account, 870 million. We still have about 200 million that the law allows us to use for capital outlay and equipment purchase. Now, I will relate that to our presentation before Congress. We made a station-by-station -station analysis of the MOOE that had been historically provided the court. For all lower courts, the MOOE on a per court basis would be an average of 44? The first, the first figure, the lower, MOOE. 48? 44,000. Now, that's from the budgetary allocation. What you do then is you divide this 217 million by the number of courts nationwide, and it is an additional 44,000. Correct? Correct? Okay. So effectively, the MOOE for our courts on a monthly basis, this is a monthly basis, is only 88,000. So we showed that to the congressman. While an average, a standard agency with 14 personnel has MOOE of 2.4 million a month. So congressmen were so shocked to find out that our budgetary MOOE plus the MOOE that uh, we can allocate to the lower courts, even if you combine them, it cannot even reach 100,000 per month, per court. And they were saying, how are you able to run the system? And that's, I think, one reason why we have such inefficiency. The Congress, uh, Congress, several congressmen have already asked us to submit a revised proposal to increase the MOOE. Because even from the JDF, this is 200 million additionally for funds that you call discretionary, meaning it is the court that can distribute them already to the courts nationwide. That really does not amount to much. So the appeal is please Congress kindly give us more money so that we can have better looking chairs and tables. Hmm. If you had uh, noticed uh, the, uh, uh, during the launching of the Hostitia the congestion program, there was one judge who spent for her own uh, courtroom just so that it looks a little more dignified. What is happening right now is judges and clerks of court are spending for some of the operating expenses in our courts. And some of the bills of our courts, utility bills, 
lend themselves to being del delayed, and we have had experiences of telephone lines being cut and some utilities being denied us. We're trying to make the system more uh, expedient so that this does not happen again. But what this all tells us is you cannot really run a court that will really be efficiently delivering justice on less than 100,000 MOOE per month. Thank you, Edu. Thank you, eh? Follow up, Edu. Yeah, one other question, Madam CJ. Uh, I, I've been wanting to ask you this since uh, a year ago. <laughs> so, so uh, judicial, uh, in, you mentioned about judicial independence, and you know, judicial independence is often gauged, even in public perception, with the uh, independence of, an, of a justice from the appointing authority. So for you, Madam CJ, uh, how do you think should the Chief Justice uh, prove independence from the President? Well, I know I'm really independent, and I don't know whether there is really a way to prove it. But let me point out to you that in the ARM law, the ARM election synchronization law, this was a pet bill of the administration. I voted against that. You remember that, Edu? Against one popular politician in Cavite who, who has been carried very strongly by the administration party. I was part of the minority. I was earlier part of the majority, but I lost together with my colleagues when the voting on the motion for reconsideration took place. And I haven't received any request for uh, or even any message to vote in accordance with the political plans of any person. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that they respect that. So, I, I hope people look at my voting pattern. But what I do not want also at the same time is for people to goad me to show independence and vote against for the sake of demonstrating independence. I should vote purely according to how my conscience dictates my vote to be. Thank you, Thank you Edu. Now, maybe this is related to a question that came from Twitter. Uh, what, on what issue would you break ranks with the, ex with the executive or the appointing power, and would you do so? I don't know if you want to answer well, that separately. I, ha I have broken ranks already with the, lip I'm sorry, with one party, no? with the dominant party on at least two occasions. Thank you, ma'am. 